concert, man. This whole training is going to be awesome. It's going to be amazing. You know, God has put it together, and, you know, we just had a lot of people come up and say, hey, we want to help you, we want to support, do whatever we can do, you know, and that's the heart of God, man. You know what I mean? The heart of God ain't trying to, you know what I mean? Like, you know, I said that some people are, are uh, you know what I mean? They're like powered lawnmowers, you know what I mean? All you got to do is just give them a direction. <laughs> Yeah. They're gone. They'll, they'll take off if you let them. You know what I mean? You gotta, hey, hey, come over here. And you got, you know what I mean? And some are like wheelbarrows or like a dolly. Unless you move them, they're not going to move. Yeah. Unless yeah. you fill them, you know what I mean? And put the stuff in them, then pick them up and go over and then dump them out. You know what I mean? They're not going to move. And it's like, you know what I mean? You know, uh, but there's just, there's just the heart of, the heart of God is always, you know, whatever you want, whatever you need, yeah. we're, we're, we're there to do it, you know what I mean? We're there to run with the vision, we're there, you know, and I, like I said earlier, the vision hasn't changed. The vision hasn't changed. We change. We, we you know what I mean? We, we change, uh, but God's word never changes. The vision never changes and God's heart never changes. People will come and people will go, but God will never, he'll, he remains the same. You with me? He remains the same. He's faithful. He's faithful. Amen. You know, yesterday, Sister Becky, she blessed my life because those of you who know Sister Becky, she plays the piano at Pastor Ray's. She stood up there and she says, you know, the, 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 the uh, uh, what did she say, Naomi? She said that, uh, or I, you went there, um, she said something about the, oh, my wife said it last night. Um, uh, Standing your post. Standing your post. She says, I'm here as a testimony to you today to let you know 25 years. She said, I was with Pastor Ray in his first service that he ever had as his church in his house uh, 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 of two bedrooms and a, and a, and a couple closets. And, and he was saying how he used his two bedrooms as the, or the front room and the two bedrooms as classrooms and the, the nursery was a walk-in closet and she in the first service that he had he had given a revival asked a sister he went to the church seen sister Becky and he asked her what church do you go to and she says why well, I, I we've been struggling going through our time and I don't really go to church he said I want you to come to our church in his house in the two-bedroom house you know and, and he had the children in the closet with children's church and uh, she says, and he put me to play the first service with a little plastic piano. And, 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 and there I was playing for the thing. And she says, I'm testimony today that, that, that 25 years later that, if, that you are able to stand your post for 25 years and not move. And we don't see it. You know what I mean? We don't see that. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? And, 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 and even in marriage, you don't see that. Nikki Cruz said it yesterday. He said, we got people that are married three months and divorce. Three years and divorce. But people that look to, uh, some of us that have been married for Pastor Ray 25, me and my wife 27 years, they're blown away. How in the world can you stay married for 27 years, 25 years? The Nikki Cruz, 52 years. And he said, there's only one thing, it's Jesus Christ. There's, there's, a, there's a greater love than the love that you have. How many know that? You with me? That love of God has to be greater than the love you have for them. Because, you know, Becky said it. She said this, I've stood my post for 25 years. And I'm still playing the piano. And she said, and I couldn't find a song, Naomi. I couldn't find a song to sing that's suitable for my pastors. And I didn't know what to do. She says, so me and my son wrote one. Amen. And she sang her song that they wrote, and it was amazing, man. I'm telling you. But it's just the heart of God. She stood her post for 25 years. And she said, and I want you to know that in a, in a marriage or in a relationship, she says, sometimes you love them, and sometimes you don't like them. And she says, and there's been times in my, in my life where I've loved Pastor, I've always loved Pastor Ray and Sister Lola, but she said, there's been times where I did not like them because they said this or they said that or whatever. And she said that sometimes Pastor Ray tells me, uh, you know, Becky, do this. And she looks at him like, what? Like, like you know, uh -uh. She says, but, but in, her, in, her, in her, with her mouth, she says, yes, sir. And she says, and I just do it, and I don't understand all the time. 
what he's telling me to do or what is he says, but he's never led me astray in his in his in his guidance of my family and my life all these years. You with me? And she said, you know what I mean? And it was just heavy, you know what I mean? Because in in church, guys, in church. You with me? You're you're gonna uh, you're gonna f find people who you like and people who you rub you the wrong way and you might not like them. You with me? But but that's that that's that's where your work comes in. You with me? That's where your love and your determination and your steadfastness to say, you know what? I, I mean, you know, in our city, and I've said it before, our city has a spirit of divorce, and it's not just our city; it's this nation. I asked Pastor Daniel Matuba, a pastor that come from uh, Africa. I said, Pastor Daniel, I said, because he had a few hundred people in his church and an orphanage and all this. I said, what's the divorce rate here in Africa, in your, in your country? And he says, divorce rate? What's that? He says, in our country, there's no divorce. He says, because the husband pays the price for his bride. You see, over here, you can just find any woman and just, you know, give her a diamond and she'll fall head over heels for you. <laughs> You with me? Never even talk to her parents. Never even like her children if she's got kids. We just, oh, we just get married. He's over there. You have to pay a price for the woman. You have to pay a dowry. He said, I had to pay a bunch of cows for my wife. I brought my cows to the father and asked him for the hand of his daughter. And he accepted. And he said, I took a lot of cows to him. You with me? And every single one of those cows costed a lot of money for them. But he said and there was an investment. There was something there. He says that I placed there of high value on my bride. I wanted her and, and I paid the price, the biggest price I could pay for her hand. And her, her, dad, and her dad accepted me as his son. You with me? And he says, and, and, and because there's a high price to pay for that woman, there's not a divorce rate. You with me? Mm -hmm. Over here, we don't have that. Yeah. You can walk into a church and come and stand over here and say, you know what? I'm a, I, I'm a, I got a gift. You with me? Yeah. I can sing. I'm a, I'm a pastor. And they'll put you with the mic and say, okay, go ahead, pastor the people. Yeah. Don't even know who you are. Yeah. Don't even know what spirit you have on you. Right. Don't even know what kind of, you know what I mean? The Bible says, test the spirits in the people. Right. You with me? Amen. Because people can come with 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 flattering tongues, Amen. and they can have you head over heels in love with them, and you're there, and they're burning you. They're burning you for every cent you have, and they walk away from you. Right. You with me? Amen. And you're left, oh, I don't know what happened. Right. You with me? Amen. Because you 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 were seeing with the eyes, and you were you weren't testing the spirit. Amen. You with me? He Amen. said, not everybody that says Lord Lord is gonna go to heaven. Just because somebody carries a Bible or says that they have a ministry, that don't mean nothing to me. You with me? That's why it's that's why people don't like coming here because it's like we don't give them that. Just go ahead and preach. Go ahead and take our children. Go ahead and, and work with our kids. And then they're over there molesting our children. I don't think so. You've got to test them, people. The Bible says put them to the test. Test their faithfulness. You with me? I don't care if you're a preacher. Can you come to service on time and be here faithfully every service? Yeah. You with me? Yeah. And you know what I mean? It's things like that that you got to look at. Is that man really a man of God? Or does he just have a Bible and say, I love Jesus? Yeah. And he's cute. <laughs> and that's good enough for me. But low standards we have. Yeah. What low standards we have in men, what low standards we have in women, what low standards we have in ministry. You with me? Yeah. Some pastors in this city are so desperate for people to come to their church. I don't they'll they'll, they'll look for them and hey, come come to our church. We'll put you up here. You could even preach. You could sing and play. We'll move Naomi out of the way. You come in here because you're a better player than she is. You with me? Yeah. And, and they don't even, you know what I mean? And it's just so that they can get bigger and look better. Right. You with me? And it's, it has nothing to do with God. What are you saying? Right. What's your heart, Lord? Right. Does yeah. this person match up with me? And is this person going to make me a man of God? Or is she just cute, fine? Right. Yeah. 
Is this a man of God? Does he really love you? Is he right there under his pastor? Submitted to him? Because if he can't submit to his pastor, he surely ain't going to love me the way I need to be loved. Is this wife that I chose a woman of God? Is she going to spur me on to my destiny or pull me to the gates of hell with her beauty? You with me? I mean, it's heavy duty. Amen? And we don't want to think like that. We don't want to see like that. We don't want eternal... You know, uh, uh, to think eternally, we want to think temporarily. What what benefits me now? What blesses me now? And right. and right. friends with benefits. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You with me? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. We're just friends. And T.D. Jake says, and then the friend ends up pregnant. Right. Oops. Right. You with me? Yeah. But we don't have each other. And, and and every time, look, you just birth an eternal soul into the into the earth. That will spend heaven or hell somewhere. You with me? They're, they're going to go to heaven or they're going to go to hell. And that is an eternal being. You with me? Yeah. Because we wanted to have fun. Yeah. Right. You with me? Right. And, and you know what I mean? And it's like, man, every, every you know what I mean? Every decision we make matters. You with me? Yeah. And every, every, you know what I mean? We can't just treat the gospel lightly. You with me? We have to we have to understand, man, this is heavy duty. You with me? It's heavy duty. We can't be playing with people's lives and playing with people's souls. This is eternal, eternal, man. You want to be a teacher, you want to preach the gospel, you better understand that there's a mighty uh, uh, judgment coming on them teachers. You're going to give an account one day for the things you're teaching other people. And if you're teaching them wrong, I'm telling you, there's going to be a judgment on your life. Right. You with me? That ought to put the fear of God in you. It ain't easy getting behind this mic and just preaching and teaching. People think, I can do that. Yeah. I'll go yeah. start my own church. And, I, and, and, it, and, it, and it makes my spirit quake when I feel, when I think of that. Because they don't have no idea what it is to start a church. Right. They don't have no idea what it is to be responsible for souls. You with me? Yeah. And it ain't easy pastoring people. People are a trip. I don't know if you know that or not. All you got to do is kind of look at your kids and say, man, you're a, they're a trip. They don't listen. They're, they're, they're rebellious, disobedient. You ought to try pastoring. Huh? And you look and say, oh my God, come to church. Why? I don't have to. Yeah. Like because he'll help you, because he'll grow in God. I'm growing at home. Uh, <laughs> I can read my Bible and pray. I don't need y'all. Yeah. It's like your children telling you, I don't need you. Shoot, I'll go with my friend. My homie's got a house. I don't need your house. Yeah. I need your money. I'll go slang. I'll go steal. Right. I'll go get mine. I'll go to the mall. I'll go to Walmart. And everybody's going to Walmart running out with stuff. Yeah. <laughs> You with yeah, me? Right. I just seen, uh, I think it was uh, Wednesday or, or, or third or Tuesday. I just seen a woman, a, a woman that was in her fifties. You know what I mean? She was just, a, she was like somebody's mom. And I seen the cops uh, arrested her and taking her out of Walmart. Wow. And and one of the guys had come in, and this is a trip because he come in, he kind of looked like Oscar, dressed real nice, you know what I mean, a t-shirt, some jeans. And he's, and he's on the phone, he sits next to me, hey, guess whose mom I just seen arrested? And he's laughing, and he's telling this guy, yeah, so and so's mom, just, I just seen her handcuffed and taken out of Walmart. And he's laughing, but the dude is sitting there with a 9 millimeter on the side of his pants. And I'm like, I don't understand this. Why does he have a gun? And he was just waiting for his wife to get her nails done. He wasn't no undercover or security. And then I seen another older man. He was probably in his 50s, kind of short, Mexican, curly hair, just in a t-shirt and jeans with a sidearm. Wow. And I'm thinking, what is going on here? You with me? Yeah. It's like we're, we're coming to a time and in, in, in where, you know, the, the people are going to shoot these people dead. Yeah. These people that are stealing, they're just, they're going to kill them and just say, drag them out and bury them because they're, they're good for nothing. They're like, uh, uh, you know what I mean, zombies. They're like, they're, you, you, and that's what it's going to become. You with me? Yeah. They're like no good. They're just like, you know, in, in Brazil, in Brazil, over there they got what they call a, a sewer rats, which are little children who, who grew up in the streets, have no mother and father, living on the streets, living in the sewers, 
who are crackheads, I guess, or smoking something. You know, so they go out and they steal, they go out and they kill, they go out and they rob, and then they come back little kids, like our Royal Rangers, living down there, smoking this whatever it is they're smoking and doing whatever it is they do. And the policemen are given, Brother Oscar, $25 a head to kill them. $25 a head to kill them kids in the sewers. Because that's how bad it's gotten. You with me? And one day it'll get like that here. Where there'll be so many people on drugs, so many people on pills. You know what I mean? They'll, 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 be, they'll be running out. I mean, somebody told me just the other thing was Andrea. Somebody said, we went to Walmart. They were running out with stuff, chasing this man with a basket of stuff. I see it all the time. People running out, people chasing. Pretty soon, they're just going to come. These people are hindered. They're like rats. They're like cucarachas. Step on them because that's all you can do with them. Our prisons are full. The jails are full. Just kill them. You with me? And it's like we're living in those times, you know what I mean? But I'm, what I was telling you is that that spirit is infiltrating the church. Yeah, amen. It's not a person. It's not a thing. You can't look at an individual and just say, you know, they're a demon. They're a devil. No, they're not. They're a human being. Right. But they may be possessed by an evil spirit. That's why the Bible says, you know, if you watch, watch test the spirits. That's why your pastors encourage you. Pastor Ray encourage you. We encourage you. You know, hey, pray in the spirit. Keep yourself right. So that you can you can judge that and say, you know what, hey, just be careful, man. I just don't know. I'm a, I don't know, man. Just something there. You with me? Because people can fool you. They look at you. Amen. And, and, and you don't even know they're plotting underneath. It's true. Right. You with me? Yeah. And see, the thing is, is that when you're in tune with the Holy Spirit, you, you sense something's up. I had a guy in my church one time who, who, who was playing our keyboards. He was there, and he'd done an okay job. But I looked at him one day, and I said, what's wrong with you? Nothing, Pastor. I said, no, something's wrong with you. And he said, no, I'm, it's all good, you know, and, and stuff. And I looked at him, and I just knew. I just knew something was up. And I told him, brother, I don't know what is up with you. And it wasn't like, you know, he had a bad day or anything like that. It was something spiritual. Yeah. And I told him, I don't know what it is about you. I says, but the Lord is going to show me something. I said, because, you know, I mean, there's something up with you. And it wasn't, a, it wasn't I could look at him and he looked normal. But it was a spirit thing I caught. It was that discerning of spirits, and I knew something's dirty. And he says, oh, no, 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 that's good. I said, give it a couple of days. The devil will always manifest. Right. And sure enough, man, a couple of days later, man, it, he was gone. He booked, and not only that, he was telling a bunch of people a lot of bad things about us. You with me? He, he told ladies where he worked in this telecommunications that we had him hostage as like a cult. <laughs> and that we were taking all his money and that we would not let him have of his family uh, contact with his family almost like we had him like a like in a cult uh, separated and I knew some of the workers there I knew one of them one of the ladies pretty good because we grew up together and when we found out what because uh, yeah, God showed me something there and he showed other lady another lady in the two my aunt Mary he showed her he said, she told my mom, tell Vince to be careful because that man's going to bring him great harm. Amen. She had just been saved, but she was in the spirit. Yeah. Yeah. You with me? Yeah. And, 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 and I didn't know. I didn't understand. See, I didn't, I, I could, I wasn't there. I wasn't at his work. But, but, the, but, the, but the Holy Ghost is a snitch. Yeah. And he'll bring stuff out. Right. See, and I want you to know today that just not everybody... That, 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 that is either in this city or even in this church that comes whispering about your pastors, you guys better be careful. Yeah. That's right. Because them, them same individuals are whispering about you two. That's right. You with me? Amen. And somebody that's around doing stuff like that is not a person to be trusted. Amen. That ought to give you something right there. And when we found out, when this man had left us, took off and, and realized... The, 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 these individuals had, had thrown him a secret going away party, gave him a lot of money and bought him a ticket to, to El Paso of all places, to where his sister lived. 
and they had him a going away party and bought him gifts and gave him money and all this stuff. And we went, my wife went one day to find out, hey, have you guys seen this guy? What's going on? And this guy, you know what I mean? He was, he, he had, he, they had looked at my wife and they said, you guys are sick people, man. You guys are bad. And they said, my wife, what are you talking about? He told us what you guys did to him. She's like, what are you talking? And, they, and everything I'm telling you, she, he, they started to tell my wife, he said you did this, you kept him from his family, took all his money, had him like a, in a cult hostage. And I, she's like, what? And my wife is weeping and crying, saying, what? I can't even believe this. You with me? And, 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 and you know what I mean? And they said, well, we, we got him away from you. We, we had him a party and we, we raised money for him to leave and to get rid of you guys. Mm. And see, the thing is, is that you need to be careful who you're listening to. Right. Because not everybody who's out there saying stuff, and you're like, really? Them pastors did that to you? Mm. You with me? Yeah. And you're looking, and you're, you, then you look at us like, you ain't gonna do that to me though. He's like, do what? Amen. Nothing. Why? Because they done spoiled you. Yeah, amen. They done whispered in your ear. Right. You with me? Yeah. Told you stuff. Them people were all offended at my wife. But it's a good thing my wife knew one of them and she talked to them people and said, you know what, none of this is true. If you knew the guy and you knew us. You know what I mean? You say, that is a liar in his face. You with me? Yeah. But I knew something was wrong. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. And it's heavy duty, you know what I mean? But, you know what I mean? And I only say that is because, you know what I mean? We, we have a tendency to, to believe everything everybody's saying. And can I tell you something? You know what I mean? If somebody says, Sister Nally said something about you, she did. <laughs> Look at him and say, you know what? I don't believe you. Do, 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 do. Sister Nally, hi. You know what Sister so and so said? Amen. She said you were talking bad about me. Is that true, Sister? What? I never said that. Die. But we have a tendency not to make that call and say what? And then we just give her dirty looks in church. <laughs> and then we say stuff like, I'm leaving the church because they treat me bad. And we didn't, and, and she may never even have said anything. Yeah, man. But it's just that we're like, I'm telling you, brother, we're like, we're like children. Yeah. We're like kids in kindergarten. Yeah. You with me? Sometimes the kids will come up, Pastor, like she's being mean to me, it's just being rude, and I just had enough. <laughs> you know, like tattle, you know, tattling yeah. or whatever. You know what I mean? And you look, and you're like. Quit fighting. <laughs> Sound like an old married couple. <laughs> you know? And, and you know what I mean? And, and it's like childish. Amen. You know? And it's like, when are we going to grow up? Yeah. When, I mean, and even in a marriage, you got a marriage and I mean, a few months, and it's like, what did you think it was going to be? You with me? Yeah, yeah. Making love all day long? <laughs> In a bliss of ecstasy. <laughs> oh man, just laying there. You see the movies, so you assume, well, they're laying there for three, four days in bed, loving all day long and eating and running for coffee and their and their undies and a t-shirt and running back. And you're thinking, my husband don't do that to me. As a matter of fact, he's a jerk. He don't even help. He says I'm nothing but lazy, that I don't do laundry and fast enough, that I don't do this. You know what? I don't even like him. Yeah. As a matter of fact, if I ever had an opportunity, I'd leave him. And the opportunity will come. Because the devil will make it available to you. You with me? And that's why marriages last three months. That's why people, you know, you see Sister, like Sister Becky, and it's amazing how somebody could be in the same church for 25 years Amen. and still prospering and still on the front lines and still has her pastor's back. And then not only that, he's running the women's home. Amen. It's one thing to sit there like a bump on a log for 25 years in the church. And, and maybe even pay your tithes. It's another thing to say, you know what, I'm a part of this. Play the keyboard. Yep. I really don't feel led to do that. Yeah. No, I'm okay. If 
Find somebody else. That's dumb. That's a little plastic keyboard. That's embarrassing, like a child's toy. I'm not going to do that. Yeah. Well, she got on it and began to play. Yeah. 25 years later, you've seen the thing she plays. Yeah. But she's in the women's ministry. She's loving on 40, 30 women, you know what I mean, imparting into these ladies' lives who have children. And she's making an eternal uh, uh, difference. She's not just sitting around. She's saying 25 years later, look what God has done through my life because I've been obedient to my pastors. Just sat around. I'm doing something for God. And they said yesterday, they said they wanted to honor her and say, she does the finance, or helps with the finances, the office, the women's home, the music ministry, the... They just named all these stuff. She's a part one lady. You with me? And there's a lot of ladies in that church. Yeah. Yeah. But one lady they honored and they said, you know, this woman has done all these things. Yeah. And she's even in the midst of that, she's walked through divorce. Yeah. Walked through divorce with her ex-husband and her two boys going off the wall. Drugs, alcohol, all messed up. Right. And she still kept her nose to the plow. Yeah. Yeah. Kept her hand to the plow and her nose to the grindstone, just going forward for God. And then God blessed her with Brother Richard Fredericks. The usher, the head usher, the big guy, he came ministered here. Amen. Was such a man of God, such Amen. a heart of God. Amen. You with me? Amen. Amen. You, you with me? So yeah. some of you, some of you ladies, you know, you're after looking at a magic mind. Yeah. <laughs> and you're saying that's what I want. Well, you can have his herpes too. And his STDs and his gonorrhea, and you can have all that too, because he's with all them women, and he'll just use you for one night. Fifteen seconds of bliss, not four days in bed. He'll just use you like a rag and then throw you to the floor. What you want is a man of God. You with me? You don't look at him and say, no, does he have a six-pack? He may have a caker. But is he a man of God? Does he love the Lord? Is he going to know how to lift me not out of not out of the car into his bed? Is he going to know how to lift me when I'm down yeah, in my depression yes, and going through yeah. my power? Is he going to know how to lift me up in prayer and love on me and encourage me and read the word to me and minister to me and, and help me and provide for me, not only financially but spiritually and physically? Yeah. You with me? Is he going to be this man? There's more to looks and six packs. You guys know that. You ladies know that. Your trim little size two is now size whatever, you know what I mean? And things are not where they were before. And you know what I mean? And you're looking at Magic Mike. Does my husband look like that? Well, he don't and you don't. <laughs> but it's, see, God says, I don't look on the outward appearance of a man. I don't look on the outward appearance of a human being, is what he said. He said, I look on the heart. Yeah. You with me? Yeah. And when Sister Becky, you know what I mean? When she when she married Brother Richard, she married a gem there, man. Yeah. She married a diamond man right. in the rough. Yeah. Yeah. And God has polished him up, and you know what I mean? And you've seen him come and speak here, and I was so proud of him. Yeah. Yeah. He come in here like he'd been pastoring for years. Yeah. And he spoke to our church. Right, yeah. You with me? The mighty man of God. And you know what I mean? You, you know where you find him? He's not in there in the service wanting to wear a suit and sit next to Pastor Ray. Right. You'll see him outside with a little bit of sweat yeah. on his forehead, yeah. sitting in a truck watching you, watching your guys' cars when you're yeah. in the women's conference. Yeah. You with me? Yeah. In the heart, in the heat, yeah. listening to you know, CDs or something. He said, I watch you too, Pastor, on YouTube when, I, when I'm in the truck. Yeah. Yeah. And working a full-time job. Right. You with me? And blessed, happy. And I've seen him minister to men, and he loves the men. You guys that remember at the men's conference, he was the one that led the thing. Right. You with me? And with tears in his eyes and choked up, saying, I love you guys. And he blessed the pastors, and he gave us gifts and ties and all this stuff. And see, that's what you ladies want. Yeah. You don't need to be looking at their body, because every other woman's looking at their body. Yeah. You need to be looking at their heart and saying, is he a man of God? Does he submit to his pastor? Does he love his pastors with all his heart? Because if he don't, he ain't going to love me. If he can't be faithful to his pastors, do you think he's going to be faithful to me? Best if he looks like Mike. 
Because all the ladies will be flirting with him. And yeah. do you, some of you have been around enough. You know that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Especially when you go to awesome churches like Pastor Ray's. There's so many beautiful people there. Right. You get right. tempted. You get lost quick. My Lord Jesus. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm like, Jesus have mercy. Huh? And there's a lot of handsome men there. Yeah. They'll be like, hey sister, how are you? Do you want to go for a cup of coffee real quick? Aren't you married? Yeah, but no, my wife, she's, a, she's somewhere out of town. Just coffee, sis. <laughs> oh, Lord. And then from then on, you can't look at him the same. Yeah. He comes in with his wife, and you're like, <laughs> it's just coffee. <laughs> God help us. Yeah. Amen. 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 You want somebody that loves the Lord, right. somebody that's going to push you. One of the things Pastor Ray blessed my life, he said this. They said, because you know him, man. He, Nikki Cruz said, Pastor, I'm, a, I'm afraid for you right now. Because after he talked about, you know, how his wife <laughs> married him and all this stuff, Nikki Cruz said, I don't know if you're going to heaven, brother. <laughs> he lied, he told them. Because he said, yeah, and then my wife, after, the, you know, she met me and this and that, and then she asked me, will you marry me? And I said, yeah. <laughs> and you know, Pastor Ray, he tells her, he says, hey, do you want to be blessed? <laughs> And of course he says, she said, yes, yes. And she's like, I ran from him, Kay, yes. And she said, I ran. <laughs> but, uh, but one of the things Pastor Ray said, he said is, uh, what, what did you, what was the, the one thing that I seen about my wife? He said, she's been such a blessing to me. He said, but one thing she's been, he says that she was a praying woman. She was a woman who for 25 years has known how to pray for me. Yeah. And prayed our ministry through a lot of bad times. Huh? Yeah. You with me? Right. See, it's more than just, you know, she, she taller. Yeah, right. You with me? Yeah. She got them figures that you want. Yeah. Huh? Why? Amen. Yeah. Does she, you know, dress the way you want, smell the way you want, look the way you want? That's right. Or does she know how to get on? Does she have a, her knees oh. rough? Not all lotioned, ashy, <laughs> from being on those knees for you as a husband. Amen. For praying you through your hell and your temptation and your trials. That's right. Amen. That's the kind of wife you want. That's right. You with me? Amen. You want you want somebody that's gonna that's gonna pu push you to greatness. Amen. Amen. Not somebody that's gonna pull you away from from the call of God, yeah. but from the will of God in your life. You with me? That's the kind of individuals you want. That's the kind of spirit we need in the church. We don't need a spirit of divorce. You with me? Uh, I preached a message, uh, uh, what was it, last Sunday night maybe? Or no, remember when I showed the video on Ruth, Committed Women? Yeah. You with me? Last Sunday night, I think it was. And that kind of commitment that that woman had. See, there's, the, there's, a, there's, a two, there's two kinds of people. There's the, there's the kissers and the cleavers in the church. And the kissers are there, and they look the same. And they're like, hey, Pastor, love you, man. I bless you, bro. Love you. And then we're the ones that will say, you know what, Charlie? I'm mad at you. I'm out of here. Boom. Gone. I, I, I kind of like Pastor Vince, but I, I, you know, I, mean, I, I just, I'm out. How can you say you're out? You with me? How can you do that? What kind of buster are you? Did you get called to this ministry? Did you did God send you here? Did God tell you to come over here to this church? If he did, then where are you going? Oh wow, he changed his mind. Or no, you changed your mind. You with me? Right. You didn't do that in the gangs. In the gangs, man, you fight. You, I mean, you give your blood and you, for that color, for that barrio, for that number, whatever it is, man. We die. See, I grew up with guys that would die for me. Yeah. 
You with me? Yeah. I come from a lifestyle of guys that would go with back to back. Brother, we were talking and they said, oh man, I fight 20, 30. That's the kind of life I'm talking about. It's like, dude, we can take these dudes. Let's get down. Yeah. If they kill us or whatever it is, let's get it. Yeah. We're willing to shed our blood there for one another. Yeah. Jesus said, no greater love have any man than this, that he laid down his life for his friends. Yeah. Not that he said, you know what, oh, i got a little bloody nose for you. I'm out of here. I don't like you no more. Yeah. He said, lay your life down for your friends. Yeah. You with me? Yeah. And that's the kind of life I come from. Nicky Cruz, he's a heavy evangelist. Yeah. You don't come from some little sissy la la church right. where you get offended and you run out. Yeah. He comes, he's a like, man, I deal with sinners, hardcore sinners. Yeah. Nicky Cruz don't deal with stuff like that. He goes, that's why I don't even go in the church. I stay out there in the streets. Because yeah. you're dealing with people, man, who will sock you in the face or hug you and they'll have your back. But none of these. Judas is, man. Yeah. They'll kiss yeah. you. Love you, Pastor, man. We're tied right on, man. I love you. Until something comes up. Yeah. 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 You with me? Yeah. Until something comes up and you're over there at the other game now. Yeah. Yeah. What happened with that? Yeah. What kind of man is that? I don't want men like that on my side. Oh, I'd rather God get them out like he did Gideon. Gideon had, what, 33,000, 43,000 men? How many did he have? 33,000? And God told him, go into battle. And he says, hey, you have too many men. He says, some of them are chavalas. Yeah, chavalas. He said, not everybody there in church is ready to go to battle. They're not ready to go to war. Right. Yeah. You see, these women that I talked to you earlier about said that these women followed Christ and they ministered. See, these were soldiers. Right. My mother-in-law talking about soldiers. These were soldiers. Yeah. You with me? Yeah. And they went with Jesus to the cross. Yeah. They didn't run. Right. Yeah. You with me? Ain't it kind of interesting and funny that, that it's the women in the church that are still standing with their pastors? Yeah. Ready to get down with anybody who messes right. with them. Yeah. And the dudes are like, I'm offended. I'm out of here, bud. Yeah. I don't even like him anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. That's the trip. Yeah. Gideon, God told Gideon, you have too many chavalas in your church, bud. He said, to ask him how many of you are scared. How many of you want to go home to your wives and you're scared? I do. <laughs> and I think if I'm not mistaken, what was it? About like 20,000 of them left or something. And he stood with like 10,000 men. 23,000 walked away from him. I mean, that's discouraging as a pastor. You look and you say, man, you know what? You don't understand, Lord, watch. These are my men. <laughs> but you know what? Let me tell you this one thing here. When God came to Gideon, God found him in a threshing floor. Gideon was at, was at, was at prayer, was at intercession, was working for his family there. Yeah. You with me? He was doing what he could, and God came in and said, Gideon, you are a mighty man of valor. You with me? Yeah. He never said them men were. He called Gideon to lead that church. You with me? Sometimes we get distracted. Well, no, they're not helping me. God said, I, didn't ask. I asked you to lead it. Yeah. You're the mighty man of valor. You're the one that I've called over here. You go out and win that war, and I'm going to send men with you that are, that are lion hearts. He said, ask them how many are afraid. 23, I think it was thousand, got up and went home with their wives. What's up with that? Scrappers on the street ready to get down to well, shut up woman Snap yeah. your face yeah. Come to church Oh here honey yeah. I'm coming sweetie can I carry your skirt yeah. Yeah. Ain't that yeah. something yeah. 23,000 walked away God looked at him and said there's still too many Because I want the glory in this I don't want any man to be able to say, you know what, look what we did. 32,000 or however many men went out and we, we conquered. God said, there's too many, get rid of them. There was still 10,000, I think, left. And God told them, there's too many. Send them to, to, over there to drink at the river and watch who's really watching. See, because you think, well, no, everybody's in church. We're all attentive. We're all listening. Yeah. We're all here ready to do what God called us to do. He said, not everybody's like that. 
That's why you look around and you see a lot of people gone. Because not everybody's, you know what I mean? They're concerned about them. Amen. He said, watch and see how many lap like dogs. Yeah. And watch and see how many bend their knee and they're continually looking for the enemy and they're getting their drink and they're lifting it to their mouth and they're watching yeah. and they're praying and they're seeking the Lord and they're really after your back and they're watching to make sure nobody's harming them or you. Right. The rest of them. Yeah. Yeah. I got mines. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's time to give. Yeah. Got a little more money than we do with it. It's time to give. Yeah. <laughs> you my money. They don't know I'm struggling, going through hard times. All this junk. God said, get rid of all of them. 300 men, they took the water and they were watching. From thirty some thousand to three hundred. Right. And God says, now, 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 now the odds are even. <laughs> the enemy was coming so thick, there were like ants everywhere, you couldn't even see the ground. And God's looking and says, now I have three hundred soldiers for Jesus. We're even now. <laughs> we can take them. You with me? Yeah. I'm sure they're three hundred again. That's where you get that movie, three hundred. Yeah. That was Gideon. Gideon was the first 300. Right, man. Gideon went out to battle and says, hey, this is what we're going to do. We're going to take Uzis, M16s, missiles, tanks, all this, and we're going to go tear them up. Is that what he said? No. He came and he said, I don't even know what to give, man. He gave him a picture, man. Yeah, here, take this. And you're going to give it to your enemies. <laughs> what? I want to shank him, not give him flowers. <laughs> he gave him a pitcher, uh, uh, something like this, a torch. You with me? And a trumpet. Do, 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 to go to battle. Okay, the pitcher, the fire, and the trumpet. What's up with this? We're going to go to battle with this. Come on now, it, God never makes sense. Yeah. That's why a lot of people don't understand. They're like, I'm out of here. Yeah, That's yeah. just nuts. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and Gideon said, yeah, take that one picture and the, and the torch and the trumpet and just shut your mouth. Yeah. Go around and go in three parts. Go 100, 100, this way 100, that way 100 will come from the back. And when I tell you, he says, man, put the, that torch inside, break the pitcher and blow the trumpets. For the Lord has given us the battle. It's for the Lord and for Gideon. And they're with the pictures and stuff. Like, this don't make sense. I don't understand. Shut up. Trust the Lord. I read something yesterday on my phone. Because I got, I got this app that gives you a scripture and then it reads it to you. Because sometimes I look and I'm like... I can't see it, you know what I mean? So I got to get a magnifying glass and look at my thing. I'm looking, I'm trying to read I just press play and it reads it to me as a thank you, Lord. <laughs> it said something about the Lord has given you the battle. Just Amen. keep your mouth shut. Amen. The Lord has given you the, the, the victory. Just keep your mouth closed. Amen. You with me? Amen. And, it's, and I'm telling you, it's heavy duty. He went in, but he, he told them, you know, shout, you know what I mean, blow your trumpets, and he put the fire in the vessels. God wants to put his spirit inside of you. Yeah. And he said, and break it. Yeah. Sometimes we go through issues and trials in our lives, and the only time you're any good to God is when you're broken. Yeah. Yeah. You go through trials, and you go through hard times, and you're saying, God, take it away. And God's like, what are you doing, Miha? You just pray for me to have my will in your life. Yeah, yeah. I'm breaking you. Yeah. Yeah. I'm getting rid of that man in your life. Yeah, you said, hey, God, have my life, so I'm getting rid of him. Yeah. But I love him. <laughs> I'm with a little girl. Yeah. But I love him, Mommy. You're fine. Shut up. <laughs> And sometimes we're so tight and we're so emotional and we're so into how we feel. And yeah. He makes my heart go like that. Yeah, well, one day he'll break that same yeah. heart. Yeah. Yeah. He'll step on it and laugh at you. Yeah. That's why you better be in tune with the Lord. Yeah. 
and say, Lord, you giveth and thou taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. <laughs> he stuck the fire inside the, bro the, the vessels of clay, and then he broke them. And the trumpets represented the praise of God. Amen. When you come in here and you're going through hell and your life is broken, but you're filled with God's fire, Amen. and you begin to blow that trumpet and sing those songs, Amen. and and, and I, I don't know what, the, I can't remember what the last verse we kept singing over, but you keep blowing them trumpets of praise. Yeah. I don't understand, but I'm going to praise you anyway. Yeah. I don't know why I'm going through this. I don't know why this has happened, but I'm going to praise you anyway, God. I'm going to give you glory. I'm going to give you honor. I'm going to lift you up. And the enemy's like, what are they doing? What are they doing? They're praising me. They should be falling apart. The enemy turned on himself. When you praise God, the enemy turns on himself and he starts stabbing demons stab themselves. They don't know what to do. You with me? They don't know what to do when you begin to praise God no matter what you're going through. And that day they slaughtered themselves. You with me? Gideon won the battle. Gideon won the victory. Amen? And God showed them, man, you're going to lose. And this is how you're going to happen. Some of you have been having dreams, and don't take them lightly. Yeah. God showed the enemy the dream. Yeah. He didn't just show it to you. Yeah. Some of the enemies that we've seen, some of the demons that we've seen coming against our church, even because of this concert. Yeah. You with me? We've seen the enemy come against one of us yeah. and push him back. Yeah. You with me? Yeah. And it's like, man, dude, snap. Yeah. Yeah. Did you see Satan right there in front of you? Yeah. But the, but the Lord gave the enemy the dream too. Yep. And he's seen a big barley roll coming down. You with me? And he smashed the camp and destroyed the camp. A big bread, a big loaf of bread <laughs> rolled down, smashed the camp and destroyed it. And they said, this can't be nothing other than Gideon, the man of God. Yeah. He's going to win us. He's going to beat us. Yeah. And the enemy knows that you're going to win. Yeah. Lord, you're gonna win. You with me? Yes. Just remind me once in a while, devil, you know you lost. Yes. I know I'm hurting. I know I'm going through hard, but you know you lost. Yes. Why don't you just give up, man? Yes. You lost. Yes. Tell him. Yes. You know what I mean? He's, he's gone. He's, Jesus defeated him 2,000 years ago. He's just waiting us to come in line with his victory. Yes. He said, man, in this life, you're going to have many trials, but be of good cheer. Get excited. And you know he said, praise me, and I have overcome that world. You with me? And that's what it's all about. Amen. You with me? Not, we don't fight our own battles. God fights them for us. We don't have to stand and justify ourselves. We don't have to stand and say, well, you know, this is what I, I think, and this and that. No, 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 man. You're messing with God here. Right. God will fight my battles for me. All I got to do is shut up. <laughs> All I got to do is just be quiet. And if I hold my peace, let the Lord fight my battles. Victory, victory shall be mine. Amen. Because he's on the throne. He's large and in charge. And no enemy will come against Gideon. You with me? And I'm telling you, I don't care how hard the devil's hit you, no devil can beat you tonight. Yeah. The only way he can win is if you quit. Yeah. You with me? Yeah. The only way he'll win is if you quit. Right. Refuse to lose. Refuse. You know what I mean? Listen, I, I don't know how many of you, I mean, you absolutely, because I've heard it a million times. and. You know, sometimes you know who's with you and you don't, you know what I mean? But but if you if you love this church and you love the Lord and you say, man, I know God brought me here. Listen, don't let anybody pull you out. Yeah. Don't let people come and talk to you here. You with me? Tell me what I refuse to listen to you, man. As a matter of fact, I'm going to go tell pastor what you're saying right now. Oh, no, 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 don't say that. Why not, devil? Yeah. Because we're not wrestling flesh and blood. Yeah, that's right. you got to realize that whispering is not that person. It's that yeah. demon in them. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Why in secret? Come and tell me. Yeah. Right. 
You with me? Yeah. And it's like, you know, the devil always works like, don't listen to him. Yeah. Don't let that spirit of divorce get on you because it will affect every, every, every relationship you have. Yeah. If you, let it, if you let it affect you here in church, it'll affect your marriage, it'll affect your children, it'll go all over the place. Yeah. And it'll continue. You with me? Yeah. Some of you have been here for, for a long time. Yeah. And there's been times in, in, in your life too. Yeah. See, because I tell people this, see, people say, well, you know, I love my pastor, I'm submitted. So, well, submission don't start when yeah. you're amen in That's me. Right. That's right. Submission starts when I come up and say, hey, bro, what yeah. you did was wrong. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? You shouldn't have done it. You know what, man? That, that's jacked up. Right. Don't ever do that again, bro. Right. That's when submission begins. Yeah. Yeah. To look and say, you know what, man? That was hard, but you know what? And some of you that have been here for a while, you know. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Talk about, oh, I, I don't like Pastor Susan. And, yeah. and, you know, she's mean and this and that. But some of you in here, you love her with all your heart yeah. and soul. Yeah. 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 And you've been through that. You see Andrea with her, you see Alex by her, you see others, and you see them. And there's been a lot, there's been some discord there before. Right, yeah, right. You with me? Yeah. And they've had to come, or, or my wife, or whatever it is, and they work their issues out. Right, yeah. And when you work the issues out, you grow even closer. Right, yeah, yeah. You with me? Yeah. Don't let, don't be listening to everybody. When you get offended, you get hurt, come talk to us. Right, yeah. right. Don't run away like little children, like little kids. Like immature infants. You with me? Yeah. Kids do stupid things like that. Grow up. Because it will affect you. What you sow, you will reap. And if you sow to the righteousness, you're going to reap eternal life. If you sow to that flesh, you're going to reap that, that, that destruction. You with me? Let it affect everything you do. Amen? Live for the Lord. Don't be there. You know what I mean? And it don't matter what it is. You with me? Have that commitment of, of, of Ruth and, and, and Naomi. Then no matter what, man, I'm here. Unless God calls me and says, you know, to my pastors and to me, I am calling you out to go to a different country or go preach the gospel in New York City or something. Your pastor said, I done heard it too, sister. Praise God. Go for it. Then you, then you say, man, what did I eat last night? That burrito from 7 I rebuke you. Can't get up and run away from what? The destiny of God? The purpose of God? If he brought you here, he brought you here for a reason. So he can teach you something and train you something. And it ain't just about me. You with me? It ain't just about me. It's about a city that we're affecting for God in a positive or in a negative way. Every decision you make as a human being, you hurt somebody or you bless somebody. Yeah, you with right. me? And when right. you bless this ministry, you're blessing a community here. Yeah. Yeah. And when you curse this ministry, you're cursing a community. Yeah. And you're harming many people. Yeah. And it doesn't stop with us. It goes on to Denver. It goes on to Grants. It goes on to, to California. It goes all over the place. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody says, oh man, I, I'm not so drag. That hurts. Yeah. Because it hurts everybody, not just because right. we're feeling selfish or sorry for ourselves right. and we're going right. to go hide in the corner and suck our thumb. Right. Or maybe feel better about ourselves. You with me? Right. But no, you know what? I'm going to grow up, man. Right. Yeah. I'm going to grow up because I want my family blessed. Yeah. I want my church blessed yeah. and I want my city saved. Yeah. The vision doesn't change. Yeah. The vision's still the same. God said, go, man. Make disciples of our nations. Yeah. You with me? Preach the gospel. Our vision is to bring hope, help, and healing to the city of Pueblo through the love of Jesus Christ. And, and it doesn't change. It hasn't changed. It's still the same. Our vision is still the same. And we're going to do it. And God's going to be good to have this ministry of a lot of people we want. And I want you to get ready. I want you to get ready and, and, and be looking every day for opportunities. Yeah, yeah, People are going to be coming up to you saying, what church do you go to? Yeah. They're going to be coming up to you and they're going to be, amen, sister, I'm going through. Let me pray for you. Yeah. Lead them to Christ and they say, now you need to get plugged into our church. Yeah. You need to get plugged in. I'm telling you, to fill this place in no time at all. Yeah. No time. Yeah. You with me? Yeah. But it's, you know what I mean? It's just time for us to get up, rise up. Yeah. Rise up and start to witness, start to preach, start to pray, so, you know what I mean, uh, uh, seek the Lord like you've never sought Him before. Amen. You with me? Because I'm telling you what, the vision hasn't changed, amen? amen. Stand with me this morning. Amen. Oh, 
thank you, Lord. Three hundred is a good number. I wonder if we can believe God for three hundred people in our church. We don't need thirty thousand. All we need is, you know, what I mean, we don't even really need three hundred. All we need is thirty. <laughs> Thirty people and say, you know what? I want Jesus, man. Nothing else. You with me? Through it all, man. Through all the years, man. We've learned to trust in God. And you know what? Whenever we've been wrong, do you guys really believe that there, there is a Holy Spirit? Man. Do, do you guys know that the Holy Spirit can speak to your spouse? Yeah. You know, no matter where they go or what they do, the Holy Spirit can get a hold of them and convict them and. And, and rebuke them and correct them and encourage them. No matter where they're at, your children, even in a prison cell, the Holy Ghost can get a hold of them. You with me? And do you know that that same Holy Spirit, if we're wrong as pastors, if we do something wrong as pastors, if we dis, if we uh, uh, hurt you or harm you in any way, do do you not know that there's a Holy Spirit that 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 lives inside of us too? That can correct us. That can that can that can rebuke us. That can deal with our hearts too. Do you not know that? You with me? That comes part of trusting in the Lord. Right, man. You with me? And saying, God, you know what I mean? I I feel like I'm unjustly treated, man. But God, I surrender this to you. I surrender this to you, God. And you're the one. And and, and if it's me, show me, Lord. You with me? If it's me, show me where I need to change. You know? But it's like, you know what? I mean, if we do trust in the Holy Spirit, it's not like, you know what, then, then I'm out of here. I'm divorcing you. Yeah. You with me? Or looking at your children and saying, you know, I, I, I'm tired of you guys. I don't want nothing to do with you guys. I'm going to live my life. Or saying... I'm going to another church. You with me? That's a spirit of divorce. Don't let it get on you. You with me? I mean, things that cost and things that are worth something, I mean, there, there's an investment. There's an investment. There's money. There's time. There's effort. Blood, sweat, and tears. You with me? It ain't easy to walk away from something you've invested your life in. I told my wife yesterday, I said, I would not know what to do if me and you ever split up. I would die. Yeah. I, I need her like part of my life. Yeah. I breathe and we, we, we're we one. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? I said, I wouldn't know what to do if you ever said, I don't want you no more. I said, how do you go on from that? Right. How do you go on from something like that? How do you go on from a divorce or even a death that you've loved that person for so long and now they're gone? How do you move on from that? Yeah. <laughs> That's hard to do. That's right. Jesus is the only way. Yeah. Most people can turn to drugs and alcohol, but we can't. Yeah. We've already come from there. We can't go backwards. Yeah. The only way we can turn to Jesus, you know, is up to Jesus. Yeah. And say, God, you, you got to do it now. You're it. You're with me? Sometimes I think God lets us go through issues like that. So he can say, you know what, now you got to trust me. Now you got to believe me. And not be looking to them for support or looking to them for all the stuff you need done. All you need is me. You know what I mean? I'm telling you, you know, I mean, begin to pray for our ministry. Begin to pray, God, send people, send workers. Send electricians. Yes. Send uh, 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 construction people. Yes. Send plumbers. Yes. Are you with me? Send mechanics. Yes. I mean, you can say, man, look, a good mechanic in the church. Yes. <laughs> uh, send a, 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 a somebody with a men's home in their heart, God. Yes. Come on now. Yes. To be a part of your pastor, but if he's not called to lead that men's home, there's got to be somebody called to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Some a woman with a calling in her life to begin to minister to women, yeah. not just somebody who says, "I like to have a Bible study." Right. 
Somebody is going to sleep there with them and eat there with them and cry there with them and rebuke them and go chasing them when they're running like a fool down the street. I hate you. But I love you. We're going to pray for our guitars and our bass players, trumpets. You with me? Violinists, flutists. You with me? Ushers. Amen. Teachers. Amen. Amen. We need teachers. We need people that love children, man. You with me? People that love them and have a mission. And their mission is not to come in here and preach behind this pulpit. Their mission is not to come in here and, and, and take over Naomi's job or, or, or do anything. Their mission is nothing but they love children. Amen. Amen. That's all they want to do. Work with kids. Amen. Love on kids. Train kids up in the ways Amen. of the Lord. Amen. Send us those kind of people, Lord. Yeah, yeah. You with me? Not just people filling a position or filling a void. People that have been called to that position. Yeah. Send the intercessors, Lord. Yeah. Send the people that know how to pray and people that want to pray and, and they're going to they're gonna tear down demons and strongholds. Yeah. I've been talking to you for weeks telling you there's spiritual warfare happening. Yeah. There's, and I, and, I, and, I, and I'm not even understanding. Now that I look back, I'm seeing that that there was something brewing, something happening, and all this, and you know what I mean, and I'm saying it, but I wasn't seeing it. Maybe I wasn't sensitive enough, I don't know. You with me? Maybe I was out of tune or something and couldn't see the dis with discernment the demons in our midst, working undercover. I thought everything was good. That's the deception. That's the thing about being deceived, you don't know your, de or deception, you don't know you're deceived. You got workers undercover. You with me? That are working against our church. And we can't have that. And I pray from now on, if God ever if that ever happens, God will expose them every single time. Deal with them. Put like the like the like the thorns and the tires. Pluck them out and say, you know what? Get out of here. You're not gonna come and cause harm to our church. You with me? God has done too many things for the devil to come in here and cause harm like that. Amen. You with me? I don't need that. I don't need that. I don't need people working against me. I'm trying to build something here. That's what I told you. You feel called here, man. You plug in. If you don't, man, then just pray and say, God, what do you want me to do? You with me? Because I want you here because you know that I'm a shadow of that. I've been called to this ministry. I've been called here and I'm going to bring blessing, not harm. I'm gonna, you with me? I'm gonna, I'm gonna help, not hinder. Man. You with me? You've got to have that same heart. You gotta be in that same flow with us. Man. You can't be there working against my wife when she's trying to help other women. You with me? Man. You can't do that. Man. You can't be working against your pastor. You know what I mean? And 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 and, and when I'm trying to reach these men and you're undermining and trying to, to tell them something different, Man. that's not good. Man. You with me? Yeah. We've got to be in unity. You've been hearing me preaching unity, yeah. preaching this and that, and I, it's like, I don't know, man. I feel like I wasn't seeing or something. But I was hearing the Lord, but I just wasn't seeing what was happening. Yeah. And, you know what I mean? And it's kind of like after the fact, you look and say, what? why didn't I see that coming? Yeah. But you know. You with me? Man. You know. But, uh. God is faithful, man. That's all I know. He told me the vision hasn't changed. The vision hasn't changed. It's still the same. It's still for souls. It's still to reach this east side, man. You with me? I mean, I love Pueblo. I love the whole city. I want the whole city saved, but I want the east side saved. I want every ace. I want every duke. I want every pip. I want every blood. I want every one of these... Heel heads, these crack heads, I want every one of them in this church. Worshiping together, man. Loving Jesus. Talking about, you know what? It's going to take graffiti off walls, not going to tag up walls. You with me? Let's go pray against that pill distribution center. You know what I mean? Go march around it and call it God to close that thing down. You with me? Not, not, not be over there selling pills or using pills. You with me? Amen. And I'm telling you, he's the God of this city, right? Yes. Amen. And uh, greater things than yes. yet to do. Yes. Greater yes. things. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah, Father. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah.
Lord, we love you. The 